First, don't forget to open Blender. In this short tutorial series, I will show you how to create a stylized eye with cubic topology. It casts more performance because the topology is more dense, meaning more quads. I couldn't find a tutorial on how to make this, so we'll be creating one by using the edit mode and sculpt mode throughout the tutorial. The first step is to turn on the loop tools add-on. So go to edit, preferences and search for the add-on step. On the search bar, type loop tools, you will find the single result. You will have this because it is already implemented inside Blender. Next, I'm gonna be using the screencast keys so you can see the keystrokes I'm doing for shortcuts. If you want to use this add-on, I'll be leaving the download link in the description of this video. I'm gonna make the font bigger so you can see what is happening. The next step is to make sure that the frontal face you're looking is on the minus Y axis. Let's remove all the objects in the scene. Next, press Shift A and let's add a new beautiful cube and select it. Go to edit mode by pressing tab and make sure the transform pivot point is set to individual origins. Now on the properties window, go to modifiers and add a subdivision modifier. Change the number of subdivisions to four. You will see that the cube turns into a sphere. Now select your frontal face, press S, zero, and then hit enter. Turn on X and Z symmetry. To apply the previous modifier, we need to be in object mode. Otherwise, the apply button will be grayed out. So let's go back to object mode and apply it. Congrats, now we've made a weird looking thing. To fix its shape, we need to add a new modifier called cast. Make sure sphere is selected and let's change the factor value to one and apply it. Maybe if we turn on the geometry, we can see what is going on. Now let's go back to edit mode. The frontal face we had before now has lots of faces. Let's select three more outer loops by pressing shift, alt and click. Now type S 0.2. Now it looks even weirder than before. To fix its shape a bit, go back to object mode and add a new cast modifier again. Change the factor value to one and apply. Now we go to edit mode and hide the back of the eyeball but leaving a single loop. Press H to hide and then to select the back of the eyeball, point with the cursor to a face and press L and H to hide all the connected faces. Now let's add a new loop in the big gap and hide the small square by pressing Shift Alt and clicking the loop. We need to smooth these faces. To do that, let's go to sculpt mode by selecting the slide relax brush. Press F to scale the brush and hold Shift to smooth the faces. Let's unhide everything in edit mode with Alt H. Now we need to circle up five loops outside the square pupil. We can find the menu on the right in the edit tab. Press Shift and Alt to select the loops and click the circle option. To recover some of its shape, let's add again a cast modifier. Just keep the shape in sphere and change the factor value to one and apply it. Now things are about to get spicier. Let's turn on the proportional editing and keep it in smooth. Let's change the edit mode to vertex and select the middle vertex of the pupil. Change the orthographic view to minus Y by clicking the gizmo. Make sure the middle vertex is selected. You can see that it looks like a white dot. Press G but without moving the mouse. And then move the mouse wheel up or down to scale it. Make the fall off just right or above the first outer loop from the iris. Now press G, Y, minus, zero, 0 0.05 and hit enter. Then let's select all these vertices, turn off proportional editing and press S, Y, minus 1 and hit enter. To move it inside the eyeball, press G, Y, 0 0.2 and hit enter. Click the loop tool and add a new outer loop for the pupil. Click and hold to move it inwards. It's time to smooth the pupil now. Press Shift Alt and select the outer loop and press H to hide it. Now press L and H to hide the rest of the eyeball. Select the Relax brush again and smooth all the insides of the pupil. Go to Edit Mode, unhide everything with Alt H, select the Edge Edit Mode and select this loop from the pupil and circle it up. Press G two times to move it away from the center and then do this again for these two loops. To give the pupil more depth, click the vertex edit mode and select the middle vertex. Then turn on proportional editing, press G without moving the mouse again and with the scroll wheel match the size of the first circular loop of the pupil. Press S, 2 and hit enter. Then press G, Y, 0.2. 
01 and hit enter. Now let's hide the entire pupil and smooth out the rest of the eyeball with a brush. This can take a while, you don't have to spend 5 minutes doing this, just keep smoothing until you're okay with it. The important part you should smooth is the back of the eyeball, since that part usually won't be seen in renders, you can spread out that specific area so the rest of the eyeball has more dense geometry. Go to edit mode and unhide everything with Alt H again. Press Ctrl Y to invert the selection and H to hide again, but this time the eyeball. Smooth the pupil until the geometry doesn't move that much. Then go back to edit mode and unhide the rest of the eyeball. Select the edge edit mode and with Shift Alt select the outer iris loop and type G Y 0 0.005 and hit enter. Now let's add more geometry to the iris, either one, three or seven loops. In case your iris texture maps are high resolution, I recommend going with seven. So technically at this moment we are finished with the modeling, but if you want to make sure all the vertices are symmetrical, go to the face edit mode and select the minus Y orthographic view. Now let's cut all the faces except for the upper right ones. Change to vertex edit mode and select the vertical vertices with shift, alt and click. Press S, X, 0 and hit enter. Then for the horizontal vertices press S, Z, 0 and hit enter again. To recover the geometry let's add a mirror modifier on the X and Z axis and apply it. If you have PTSD from previous projects you've worked realizing you had handguns or flying vertices all along, go to edit mode and click select, select all by trait, non-manifold and press G to move the vertices if there are any. Then go to the select menu and click select faces by sides, go to the small drop down from the left to open it up, then check for 3 and 5 faces. If the mirror didn't work properly you might have them. Now, for the UVs, we know that this was a subdivided sphere that was previously a cube, so the loops connect from the pupil to the back of the sphere. To mark the seams, it's just simple. We need to go to Edge Edit Mode and with Shift Alt select the circular loop of the outer iris. Then right click the loop and select Mark Seam. We do the same but with the outer loop of the pupil. Press F3 and search for Unwrap. In my case, I only have a single image for the color of the iris. So I select only the iris faces and scale it to match the image. For the pupil and the sclera, their UVs can be scrapped out. Let's create two more materials. Select the pupil only with L on the drop down of the left, select seam. So only the faces surrounded by the seam get selected. The color just set it to black and the specular value set it to zero. For the sclera, set the specular to zero and roughness to one. And for the final touch, Click the eye, right click and select Shade Smooth. Now let's start with Shape Keys. Go to the right on the Properties window and click this triangle thingy. On the Shape Keys, click the plus button twice, name the second Shape Key Pupil Shrink. Now enter to Vertex Edit Mode, make sure you're on Individual Origins, then select the Pupil Faces with L and select Seam on the drop down menu. This is important. Deselect with Shift Alt click the seam loop, press S, 0 and hit enter. Press Tab to switch back to object mode and to test the shape key move the slider. Next we have to make a new shape key. Click the plus button again and name it Iris Shrink. Go to Vertex Edit Mode, press L to select the iris and press S, 0 and hit enter again. Well. Now we've got two shape keys to shrink both pupil and iris, so now how do we expand them? Make a new shape key and call it iris expand. Press tab to go to edit mode, click edge and select these three loops of the sclera to move it outwards by pressing G two times. Move the outer iris seam loop a bit and make sure correct UVs is turned off. Now let's hide the pupil and the sclera so it leaves just the iris. Keep moving the loops from the iris evenly. Change the sculpt mode, set the value of the shape key to 1 and smooth everything. Press Alt H to unhide everything, then change to object mode. It might not look that impressive, but keep in mind that the iris never expands, at least in a real human eye. Even though this is a stylized eye, having this might come in handy later. Add a new shape key and name it Pupil Expand. Let's go to Edge Edit Mode, scale all the iris loops to the max, select just one edge loop from the pupil and move it as far away as you can. 
change to face edit mode, select only the pupil with L, press Ctrl I to invert the selection, press H to hide, go to sculpt mode, set the shape key value to 1 and smooth all the faces. Go back to edit mode, press Alt H to unhide everything, then change to object mode and test the shape key. Now for the last shape key, let's click the plus button again to add a new one. Name it planner and change the minimal range value to minus one. Go to edge edit mode, select the scene from the iris, then hold shift S and move the mouse down to select cursor to select it. Let's change the transform pivot point to 3D cursor and make sure proportional editing is turned off. Select all the faces from both pupil and iris with L, press S, Y, 0 and hit enter. Let's go back to object mode with tab and test the slider. If you notice, as we go to the negative value, it gives more depth to the eye. So playing with these values might help a bit to fix some faces clipping. For the cornea, go to object mode. Hold Shift S and select Cursor to World Origin. Then press Shift A and add an icosphere and choose for subdivisions. Press S to scale it and just make it slightly bigger than the eye. On the layer channel, click the icosphere and with Ctrl click, select the eye. Press Ctrl J to join them. Go to edit mode, select all the icosphere faces with L, then on the materials tab add a new material called cornea. Set the color to pure white, roughness to zero, transmission to one, and turn on screen space refractions. If this last option doesn't show, change the render engine back to Eevee. Hit assign to apply those faces the cornea material. Now for the symmetry. First, turn on both floor on all axes and make sure the transform pivot point is set to 3D cursor. In object mode, move the eye to the positive axis with G. Hold the mouse wheel button and move it according to your character's proportions. In my case, I will move it just slightly, about this much. Click the eye and press Shift D, Enter, then S, X, minus 1. Select both eyeballs and press Ctrl J to join them. Right click the eyes and select Shade Smooth. Let's go back to Cycles and render preview so we can see through the cornea. To fix any distortions from the cornea, select all the faces in edit mode and press Shift N. If we test the shape keys, both eyeballs should work. Now for the shading, first let's add an environment background so the scene looks bright enough. Let's change this timeline to Shader Editor. Click Object and select World. Press F3 to bring the search bar and type Environment Texture. Add the node and open the texture. I will be using this one I previously downloaded. As always, I'll be leaving the link in the description. Connect the yellow dot to the background node. If the eyeball doesn't shape properly, you might be on Eevee. Go to the Engine tab, turn on Screen Space Reflections and click the Refraction checkbox. To fix the right eye UV, select the Eyes object, go to Edit Mode, hide the cornea faces, then select the iris faces from the right eye, go to the UV Editing tab, Press A to select all the faces on the UV editor. Press S, X, minus 1, then R, X, minus 90. Unhide everything and you're done. And that's basically it. If you just want to pray a file, the link should be in the description below. This covers modeling, shading, and shape keying. In future videos, I will do some rigging and animation videos, so you can support me either by subscribing, leaving a comment, and liking or disliking the video. See ya.